If you've ever started a Warframe clan or been tasked to build your clan's dojo, you've asked this question. What is the best dojo layout? Or what layout should I use? Those familiar with dojo construction know that a dojo can take weeks to build, and a layout error early on can result in you spending the next month trying to fix it. So it's best to know exactly what you want to build before you build it. However, unless you've built a dojo, how would you know? Well, visiting many dojos over the last two years, we've sifted through the trash so that you don't have to. Here at Watch Dojo, we're counting down our top 10 picks for Warframe dojo layouts and layout archetypes, and our reasons for why. Layouts are ranked by how frequently they can be found by any given dojo dojo out in the wild versus actual design logic going from worst possible to best possible. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Number 10, the clusterfuck. Coming in last, there really isn't a proper name for this archetype. It's just that dojo you load into, and the first words out of your mouth are, Okay, what, is what this? the shit? There isn't a strict layout for this one, as this truly just represents those crazy dojos you see when you load in, and you can immediately tell they didn't spend one second of thought on how or why things should go where they are. Room placement goes brr. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Number 9, The Hoarder. If you've watched my Dojo History video, then you know about the ancient 1.0 Dojo rooms from Dojo Builder Alpha. These rooms were deprecated as they didn't fit or conform to any grid and caused serious layout problems. However, anyone who had them built prior to that change got to keep them. If you have this layout, it's because while the rooms are riddled with flaws, you cling to the past and act as if they hold any value or prestige and you'll never let them go. Even though it's guaranteed they've already caused you major problems with how their grid and bounds work, and you've likely already nuked your entire dojo around them just to keep them, and in the future you will end up having to choose between keeping your old problem rooms or clearing them out to make room for newer, much better alternatives. Number 8, The Tower. We've all seen it. Technically, it's a step up from total anarchy and chaos on your layout, but that's quite literally all it is, a step up. And then another one. And then another one. As its builder, you might end up enjoying this layout archetype because maybe it'll give you a sense of compartmentalization or expansiveness when you visit. But just know that literally nobody wants to sit in elevators to get anywhere, and 10 times out of 10, fast travel is going to be used instead. Pick this layout if you want to ensure that literally no one explores your dojo, or if you want to make your clanmates beg you to make changes that you aren't inclined to oblige. Spaghetti. Number 7, the spaghetti bowl. It's all about the journey, right? Well, it sure as hell is if your dojo looks like this. Somehow, somewhere, it became less about actual dojo rooms and more about not-so-intricate hallway systems to get to each destination. These guys usually look like complete fucking morons when another room releases, and they don't have space for another 40 hallways to accommodate. Mark the words of myself. Gwyndolin. Number 6, the Clan Hall Hallway. If you haven't already, you're going to come across a ton of layouts that look like this, and if you're newer, you're gonna wonder to yourself, but why? Well, back in the day, there was a clan hall build order where each consecutive hall required the hall before it in order to be built, whereas nowadays you can build them in any order you'd like. Why did they take the time to build those specifically? Because back then you also didn't have entrati halls to boost the dojo capacity with no build limits, and clan halls were the only rooms that did. So if you wanted to even come close to the room limit, you needed these clan halls. If you have this layout archetype, it's because your dojo is old or because you blindly copied someone else's layout without learning anything about dojo construction. If given a choice between doing something and nothing, I'd choose to do nothing. But I will do something if it helps someone else do nothing. I'd work all night if it meant nothing got done. Number 5, The Minimalist. Given its namesake, this is the absolute bare-bones minimum you need from a dojo to further your mastery rank and only that. Pick this layout if you don't care about clan rank, functionality, have no friends, and are in a rank zero ghost clan alone. If you happen to stumble upon one of these unicorns during a trade out in the wild, be gentle, as if you suggest anything that comes anywhere remotely close to saying they should do more than the bare minimum, you'll get kicked out of the dojo mid-trade for being an elitist. Number 4, the nutcase. This layout archetype doesn't care about functionality, accessibility, or anything except 
Symmetry? The overarching goal here is much better than the predecessors that ranked behind it, as symmetry isn't a bad thing to strive for, but a lot of layouts I've seen chasing it included nonsensical features such as two Oricon labs, two crimson branches, two oracles? And other crazy things. Dojos have a room limit, and just because the pretty colors don't line up to match perfectly and make your brain feel good doesn't mean you should waste those rooms for it. Get some help. Number 3, The Ranker. So you've heard about the Ascension Altar, or maybe you have a clanmate pestering you for the free endo. This layout archetype doesn't cater to decoration or functionality, only clan XP, focusing on keeping any and all relevant rooms to the clan rank, so that way you can have those big peepee numbers in recruit chat that say rank 11, when you bait the next schmo into thinking you have an active clan just because your rank is one higher than the average. I am the cow. Follow me, and ponder this question. What if they added more dojo rooms? Number two, the Boy Scout. Now I'm gonna spend a bit of time on this one before going to our top layout, as this one is far less about a specific layout or archetype rather than it is about a necessary practice. And this practice abides by one simple principle that has come to be an absolute truth with dojo construction and decoration, and that is, there will always be more later, and everything is subject to change. Boy Scout layouts plan for the future because there will be another dojo room added down the line that will make you reconsider how you've done things, and it will punish you for building out close to the room limit. Though this doesn't necessarily mean you should barely build anything at all, because on the flip side they've punished us as well for not building fast enough. An example would be Inspiration Halls. Shortly after they were released, they were limited to three maximum, and anyone who built them before that limit was placed got to keep them. Rooms that have been around for a year plus are just as likely to have their limits changed as a room that was added to the game last week. So how do you win when everything in the dojo system is subject to change under the right circumstances? You keep things open-ended like this. You don't trap yourself in dead-end rooms. You still build out a lot, but you decorate from the center and move out. You build out in a way that allows for a quickly collapsible or destructible dojo. So if a new set of dojo rooms is released, you're not stuck debating whether you want to nuke heavily decorated rooms. This way you still have space for a new lab or two, and you still have rooms built if limits change, and you still have options. While this layout type has the highest amount of planning put into it, it also assumes that your dojo is still incomplete and in progress, as a finished dojo doesn't really have much room for change. Now before we get on to the top layout, I'd like to pose a question. What is a dojo for? MR, sure, you get your blueprints there. Endo, maybe. If you happen to have joined a dojo before it got to max rank, yeah, you get endo. A social hub? Not a chance in hell. Even Maru's Bazaar is more appealing than a dojo when it comes to a social hub. In the end, it boils down to a glorified trading post, so that way you can skip the trade tax at Maru's Bazaar. But beyond that, the only remaining purpose, once you've gotten your endo and your blueprints, is decorating. Now, if you've watched my dojo history video, you're fully aware of that already, and you already know the direction that DE is taking dojos. Dojos are for decorating, change my motherfucking mind. So, if dojos are for decorating, and if you had to have a complete dojo layout right now, it would be focused on the clan essentials, and then decoration afterwards. So, let's factor that in. Dojos have a 128 room limit right now. Now, different dojo rooms have different capacities, and the highest capacity a room can have right now is 1600. If you're familiar with decorating, more capacity means more possibility, and that can mean the difference between plating a room, and transforming it into something different entirely. So 1600 times 128 equals 204,000 to 800 decorations max that can be placed in any given dojo. That seems like a lot at first, however it does go quite quickly, and that's also an impossible maximum to achieve, since you need to have essentials for clan rank, which decreases the capacity significantly, and then you also need things like reactors and halls to increase the soft room limit. Granted though, halls can just be in trotty halls for the same boost and maximum capacity. And that leads us to layout number one. One, the decorator. This layout abandons the premise of using any elevators or hallways at all, because elevators only lead to the clusterfuck of the layout bug, and they're also horribly inefficient. And then hallways are also remarkably inefficient, since they are an extremely condensed space with very little capacity at all. 
Why would you settle for a smaller condensed space when you can have a larger space with more than four times the capacity and then just build a smaller space if you want it later on? Fuck elevators and fuck hallways. This layout also still caters to the clan essentials while maximizing on decoration capacity available and also maximizing on the open space room where possible. Open space has the same max capacity as any other dojo room, however 1600 capacity in open space means a lot more than it does in any other room since it is the largest decoratable space in the game, and you can take full advantage of the decoration scaling option to make the capacity go a lot farther than it would before. Now I've met a lot of people that see a layout like this and they say, wow, that's a lot of work. I'm probably never going to decorate anyway. But as crazy as it may sound, decoration is one of the pillars of endgame, right next to dick measuring and fashion. So if you think that you or a clanmate will ever try their hand at decoration in the future, why not try to build a layout that can accommodate that? You may think that that you're never going to try building anything yourself, but eventually you might have a clan mate that's just like me and happens to be dented in the skull enough to actually give decoration a try for kicks and then get obsessed with it for whatever godforsaken reason. Something, something, if you build it, they will come. Now I won't dwell on this for too long because I know that not everyone is going to agree with me with this layout or on the purpose of dojos. However, at the very least, I hope you're able to take away the practice of preparing a dojo for the future and then also the fact that there's so many practices that your clan mates are never ever going to love. If they tell you they like it, they're fucking lying. No one likes three elevators. No one likes having a hallway system to get anywhere. You can convince yourself that it's about the journey or a story you're trying to tell with some fucked up clan lore, but no one cares about that either. You're just fucking weird. Now let's move on to some frequently asked questions. Question number one. You said it can take a month to fix an error early in the layout caught later, but why? Can't I just delete whatever room I want and replace it? <laughs> no, you and I both wish that were the case. However, let me play a clip for you from my Spawn Points video that explains the true underlying pain of dojo construction and why layout planning is crucial. Let's say that I build room A and room A is my spawn point, and then I build room B, C, D, E, and F. If I want to destroy room C, I have to destroy rooms D, E, and F first before I'm allowed to destroy room D, because D is the parent of E, and E is the parent of F. F is the only room that can be destroyed without destroying another room, as every room is dependent on the room that was built before it. Next question. Deconstruction timers are still a large part of why dojos take so long to reconfigure. Why doesn't DE remove the deconstruction timer, allowing for instantaneous room removal? Well, let's say that you were a fool, and you gave someone dojo architect perms when you really shouldn't have, and they destroy your dojo. Would you rather it take them A, two hours per room layer, or B, no time at all? We may not like it, but the two hour limit acts as a safety for you, and is actually a fair time to go by. Next question will take a sec to explain. Why can't they increase the room limit to 200, especially since they've added a fair bit of new rooms recently? For starters, let's skip the part where you pretend you've successfully decorated all 128 of your rooms well enough to be happy with them, and then let's do some math. Rivens are a product far more in demand than dojo rooms, and they have roughly, what, 9, 10 values stored per riven? If we're thinking about, like, the max possible values displayed, the initial values, predisposition multiplier, and then the weapon type, and maybe something else I'm not thinking of. Decorations, though, store 8 values. The type of decoration, positional x, y, and z, rotational pitch roll, and ya, yeah, and then the scale multiplier. So if a decoration decoration has 8 values, that means a room that stores 1600 decorations stores 12,800 values per room. Now obviously not every player has made a clan, so it's not quite the same comparison, but if we do a slight extreme and assume that maybe 30% of players have made a clan at any given point, that means it's roughly an increase of 18.5 trillion values that need to be stored just for decorations if the room limit were increased to that much. We have a hard enough time trying to get just more ribbon capacity. So the the fact that they changed the room limit from 100 to 128 after rising tide was nothing short of a miracle. Don't count on an increase anytime soon. And then lastly, what are the steps to build a dojo? I tried following one of these layouts exactly, but ran into problems in the process. This video assumes that you're familiar with how to build a dojo, and is just meant to cover what layouts are going to be a good choice. If you want to learn how to actually build a dojo, along with the mechanics and intricacies of dojo construction, such as everything to do with the build order hierarchy, skyboxes, the spawn system, System, etc., then watching my dojo building guide that I'll have linked on screen or in the description below is going to be your best bet.